All right, so let's uh, let's dive into something pretty interesting. Prince George's first flying lesson. We've got this YouTube video transcript that breaks down the whole thing. And you know, it's got me thinking, this isn't just like some cute photo up, Diano, you know? Oh, it's steeped in royal tradition, family dynamics, maybe even hints at the future of the monarchy, huh? It's amazing how this one event is like a lens. Yeah. You know, we can zoom in on George, of course, mm -hmm. but also we're seeing like the whole institution, how it yeah. operates, the pressures. Exactly. So picture this. White Waltham Airfield, not just any airfield either, right? It's where Prince Philip, George's great grandfather, trained back in 1952, got his RAF wings there. Now, generations later, here's George taking his first lesson in the same spot. Talk about a deliberate choice. Yeah, choosing White Waltham that wasn't just random. It's like they're layering George into this lineage, you know, mm -hmm. connecting him visually to all these royal aviators makes you wonder what kind of pressure that adds, even so consciously at such a young age. Or Right. And then you've got William and Kate watching the Prince and Princess of Wales. The transcript mentions this mix of pride, awe, but also tension, especially for William, because he's a pilot, too. He's even talked about wanting to get back into flying. You know, I bet seeing George up there must have been a whirlwind for William, not just dad nerves or whatever. Yeah. He flew search and rescue, right? Some mm -hmm. seriously intense situations. That leaves a mark on you. Makes you wonder if part of him was reliving those missions, maybe even feeling a twinge of, I don't know, is envy too strong a word? Maybe not. The transcript does use that word. Like, hmm. here's his son getting this pure early experience of flight and William's stuck on the ground all duty bound. It's more complex than just a proud dad moment. For sure. It's like a glimpse into how these personal passions intersect with royal duty. It's easy to forget their individuals with their own desires, not just symbols. Okay, so we've got the setting, the family. Yeah. What about George himself? The transcript says he was calm, determined during the lesson. Like, unusually so for a kid that age. That's really key, that demeanor. It fits the image of a future king, right? Composed under pressure. But remember, aviation for the royals, it's not just a hobby. It's service. It's duty. Like Philip, his passion for flying all those hours, it was about connecting with the world, serving his country. And William, his search and rescue missions, those weren't just a job. He was putting his life on the line. So for George, this first lesson, it's almost like the start of an apprenticeship in a way. That's a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. And his instructor was apparently impressed, said George had this natural aptitude, like grasped the controls quickly. Now, whether that translates into a lifelong passion, who knows? But the potential's there. Okay, so we've got this lineage, Philip, William, now George all connected through aviation, this tradition of service, the inherent risk. And that risk is important because it raises the stakes. It's not just about looking good in a uniform. Mm -hmm. It's about a willingness to face danger. And let's be honest, that's something people look for in a leader. For sure. So we've talked about Phillips era, William's experience, but George is growing up in a totally different world. Aviation is more commonplace, less adventurous, you know. What do you think it will mean for him long term? That's the big question, isn't it? Will he see it as a way to connect with this whole family legacy? Or will flying just be, well, almost mundane to him? Mm. Will he need to find a different outlet, a different way to express that sense of service, of pushing boundaries? It's almost like the challenge for George won't be mastering the skill of flying, but mastering its meaning in a world where everyone flies. All right, we've covered a lot of ground here, but before we go any further- It's fascinating, isn't it, finding meaning? when something's become so normal. But before we get too far ahead, I think we've got to circle back to something from before. All that tension surrounding this event. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned William's mixed emotions. The transcript really highlights that struggle, huh? Oh, it's palpable. This is a guy who hasn't just experienced the thrills of flying, but the stark realities too. Search and rescue, that's about saving lives. Mm. Under immense pressure and risk, mm. you know. So it's not just any dad watching his kid try something new, it's deeper. Exactly. William seeing George start down this path, this path that H.E. was deeply connected to, a path that, like, shaped him profoundly. But now he's on the other side, watching, maybe even longing for that, that sense of purpose and freedom flying gave him. Yeah, like he's passing the torch, but not entirely willingly, if you know what I mean. The transcript even mentions a touch of envy on William's part. And who could blame him? Imagine having this passion, this skill, so ingrained in you, but having to step back. Because of duty, mm -hmm. responsibility. Seeing George take to the skies must stir up a whole whirlwind of emotions. He's not just William either. The transcript describes Kate as having this 
quiet tension. Watching George, I mean, any parent would feel that, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing your kid up in the air for the first time. Of course, that maternal instinct. Mm -hmm. But for Kate, there's an added layer. She gets the weight of this whole event, the legacy that George is potentially stepping into. It's not just a flying lesson. It's a future king connecting with a tradition, going back generations. Yeah, it's like this event is layered. Personal anxieties, historical significance, public scrutiny. Absolutely. And let's not forget the pressure on George himself. He's a child. But every move he makes is analyzed, scrutinized, you know. The expectations have got to be immense. You'd think all that would be overwhelming for a kid his age. But the transcript says, calm, focused, even a bit excited, no fear or hesitation. That's what makes this so fascinating. Yeah. He's displaying the very qualities we associate with leadership. Composure, determination, willingness to embrace challenges. Yeah, like he was born for this, right? It makes you think about how powerful tradition is. In shaping these young royals, it's not just learning a skill, it's about carrying on a legacy. Precisely. And this specific tradition, aviation, it speaks to this deeper theme, service and duty. Both Philip and William use their flying to serve their country. Philip, during his time in the RAF, William is a search and rescue pilot. So for them, flying wasn't just a hobby or a thrill. It was a way to connect with something bigger, to contribute, you know? Exactly. And that's how we should view George's first flying lesson. It's not just a boy in a plane. It's a potential future king taking his first steps towards a legacy of service and responsibility. Wow, that really puts things into perspective. But hold on, we've been so focused on the history, the emotions. What about the actual plane, the technical side? The transcript doesn't go into much detail there. You're right. We're missing a crucial piece. Knowing what type of plane George flew, comparing it to the aircraft Philip and William trained on, that could reveal a lot about how aviation technology has evolved and what that says about the changing times. Let's speculate a bit. What if George was flying some modern high-tech trainer, something with all the bells and whistles, you know, mm -hmm. cutting edge avionics, maybe even eco-friendly features? Would that send a different message compared to, say, Philip learning on a classic post-war aircraft? Absolutely. It would signal a monarchy that's embracing innovation, looking towards the future. It would also speak to this growing awareness of the environment, which is so relevant for George's generation. And think about the symbolism, Philip learning to fly as the world was rebuilding from war, embracing this technology that represented progress, connection, William honing his skills in an era of huge leaps forward, using them for those life-saving missions. And now George, potentially at the controls of a plane that embodies sustainability and innovation. It's like each generation's relationship with aviation mirrors the challenges and aspirations of their time. It's powerful, isn't it? Okay, so we've got this incredible mix, personal history, technical evolution, societal context, but what does it all mean for George's future? That's the million dollar question, right? Will he embrace this path or forge his own? Will he see aviation as a way to connect with that family legacy? Or will he find a new, unique way to express that sense of service? We talked about William's anxieties, the possible envy. Do you think that might influence George? Will William encourage him to fly, knowing the risks? Or will he try to steer him towards something safer, more traditional? It's a fascinating dilemma. On one hand, you've got the weight of tradition, the expectation that George will follow in those footsteps. On the other, you've got William's personal experience, knowing how dangerous flying can be. And then you've got George himself, this young boy with this newfound passion. Will he be drawn to the thrill, the challenge? Or will he feel the pressure, the burden of the legacy? Only time will tell how this plays out. But one thing's for sure. This first flying lesson, it set the stage for a journey. That could be as turbulent and unpredictable as a flight through a storm. Okay, before we go too far down this rabbit hole, I want to bring it back to something you said earlier about aviation becoming mundane. We're imagining George in this high-tech aircraft. But what if for George's generation, flying just isn't that special? Like commercial space travel is becoming a thing. Drones are everywhere. Will piloting a plane still have that same weight, that same symbolism as it did for Philip and William? That's such a good point. The goalposts have totally moved, right? For Philip, flight was this bold leap into the future. For William, it was a way to serve, to push his limits. But for George, will it be just another skill? like knowing how to code or edit video. And if flying IS just normal for him, what does that mean for the monarchy? Will George have to find a different way to embody that adventurous spirit, that connection to service? Yeah, he might have to redefine what modern monarch even means in this age of easy aviation. Maybe it'll be less about actually flying and more about championing advancements, you know, like supporting sustainable aviation tech, promoting global connectivity. 
So the focus shifts from the individual act of flying to the bigger impact aviation has on society. Exactly. Instead of being the pilot, he's the patron, the advocate. He could use his platform to promote responsible airspace, use international cooperation on these issues, even space exploration. Now that's a future king I could get behind. Supporting science, tackling global challenges. It's a far cry from just a photo op in a cockpit. And think about the soft diplomacy potential. Imagine King George not just visiting another country, but piloting himself there. Maybe even landing a plane designed in that country. What a powerful symbol of collaboration and shared innovation. Hold on, my mind is blown. We started with a simple flying lesson, and now we're talking future king shaping global politics through aviation. It shows how these small events can ripple out. George's first flight isn't just about learning to fly. It's about the potential for that skill to shape his worldview, his leadership, even his impact on the world stage. Okay, so to bring it back to our listener, what should they be taking away from all this? We've covered family dynamics, historical context, the tech stuff now, even geopolitics. I think the key takeaway is this. Tradition isn't static. It's always evolving, adapting to the changing times. And for George, this flying lesson isn't just personal. It's a crossroads between this centuries-old legacy and a future we can't predict. Like he's standing at a fork in the road. One path leads him down that familiar route of royal aviators, Philip and William. The other path, well, it's less clear. It challenges him to redefine what aviation means for a modern monarch. And whichever path he chooses, that'll shape not only his own life, but how the public sees the monarchy. Will he be a relic of the past, clinging to outdated traditions? Or will he be this forward-thinking leader embracing innovation, using his platform to tackle 21st century problems? It's a lot of pressure for a kid, but it's also a huge opportunity to bridge that gap between tradition and progress, to use his love of flying to connect with a world that's always changing. And that's where this deep dive leaves us, I think, with a sense of anticipation, of curiosity. Mm -hmm. What will George choose? How will his choices shape his life and the future of the monarchy? It's a question we'll all be thinking about. So for our listener out there, we leave you with this. What traditions are why you carrying forward? How are you adapting them to fit the world we live in? Something to think about as we all, like George, navigate our own flights through life. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time. Prince William and Princess Catherine stood proudly by, their hearts swelling with a mix of pride and apprehension as they watched their eldest son prepare to take to the skies. This was a family affair, rooted in history, as both William and George's great-grandfather, Prince Philip, had shared a passion for aviation. George, a curious boy with wide eyes and a heart full of dreams, climbed aboard the small training aircraft, his excitement evident. This was not merely a lesson, it was a rite of passage, a glimpse into the future of a young boy destined for greatness. As he settled into the cockpit beside his instructor, the reality of his lineage began to unfold. He was not just any child learning to fly, he was a prince, a future king. The aircraft's engine roared to life, and the small plane began its taxi down the runway. As it lifted off into the open sky, a collective gasp escaped the onlookers below. The sight of the young prince soaring above the fields of Berkshire was both awe-inspiring and deeply symbolic. Here was a boy stepping into a legacy that his ancestors had embraced, one that echoed through generations. For William, the moment was bittersweet. As a seasoned pilot, he understood the thrill and freedom that flying brought, but he also knew the weight of responsibility it entailed. Watching George take the controls, he felt a surge of nostalgia, recalling his own beginnings in aviation. The memories flooded back, the exhilaration of soaring through the clouds, the challenges of mastering the skies, and the profound sense of purpose that came with each flight. Meanwhile, Catherine's heart raced with a mix of maternal pride and concern. She was acutely aware of the risks involved in aviation, yet she recognized that this experience was vital for George's growth. It was a moment that would shape him not just as a prince, but as a leader, and she was determined to support him every step of the way. As the plane soared higher, George displayed remarkable focus and calm, traits that impressed his instructor. The young prince listened intently, absorbing every word of guidance, eager to learn the intricacies of flying. With each maneuver he discovered a sense of freedom that resonated with his spirit, 
igniting a passion that had been nurtured since childhood. Time seemed to stand still as the aircraft glided effortlessly through the sky. The small crowd below watched in silent admiration, their whispers a blend of awe and respect for the young prince taking his first steps toward his destiny. George was not just flying, he was embracing a legacy that intertwined with duty and service, one that would shape his future role within the monarchy. After what felt like an eternity, the plane gently touched down on the runway. Relief washed over the onlookers as the aircraft came to a stop, and George emerged from the cockpit, his face beaming with excitement. He ran to his parents, who enveloped him in a warm embrace, their pride evident in their smiles. The day had been a success, marking the beginning of George's journey into aviation and a deeper understanding of his royal heritage. As the family gathered at the airfield's clubhouse, George excitedly recounted his experience, his words tumbling out in a rush. He spoke of the thrill of takeoff, the beauty of the clouds, and the joy of flying. His parents listened with beaming pride, their hearts full as they witnessed the realization of their son's dream. The atmosphere shifted as the sun dipped lower in the sky, casting a golden hue over the airfield. There was a sense of camaraderie among the small group gathered, a shared excitement about the future of the monarchy and the legacy of aviation being passed down to the next generation. As they prepared to leave, George looked back at the airfield, a smile on his face, and a spark of determination in his eyes. This was just the beginning of his journey, and as the sky called to him, he felt ready to embrace the adventures that lay ahead. The day had been more than a simple lesson, it was a promise of the remarkable path George was destined to follow. With a heart full of dreams and the spirit of a future king, he knew the skies awaited him, and he was ready to answer the call. As the family made their way to the car, the excitement of the day lingered in the air. George's heart raced with the thrill of flying, and he couldn't wait to share every detail of his experience. Did you see how high we went, Mum? I felt like I was flying with the birds, he exclaimed, his eyes sparkling with enthusiasm. William chuckled, his heart warming at George's infectious joy. You did a fantastic job, son. I remember my first lesson, too. It's an incredible feeling, isn't it? He ruffled George's hair affectionately, feeling a rush of pride for his son's accomplishment. Catherine smiled, her heart full. You showed such bravery, George. I am so proud of you. But remember, flying is not just about the thrill, it's also about responsibility and respect for the skies. Her words were gentle yet firm, a reminder of the importance of safety and discipline in aviation. As they drove away from the airfield, the picturesque landscape rolled by, and George gazed out the window, the world below appearing smaller and more vibrant from above. His thoughts drifted to the future, to the possibility of becoming a pilot like his father and great-grandfather. Would he one day lead rescue missions, soaring through the clouds to save lives? The thought excited him, filling him with purpose. Later that evening, as the family settled down for dinner, the conversation flowed easily. George animatedly recounted the day's events, describing the sights he had seen and the sensations he had felt. William and Catherine listened intently, their hearts swelling with pride. They exchanged glances filled with unspoken understanding. This was just the beginning of a journey that would not only shape George's identity but also influence the future of the monarchy. After dinner, they gathered in the living room, where George's enthusiasm remained undimmed. Can we go flying again soon? he asked eagerly. I want to learn how to do loops and rolls. His eyes sparkled with the thrill of possibility. William chuckled, easy there, young man. We'll take it one step at a time. First, let's get you used to flying straight and level before we start any loops. Catherine added, and remember, there's a lot to learn about navigation, weather, and safety before you can take to the skies on your own. 
It's important to be prepared. George nodded seriously, understanding that the road ahead would require dedication and hard work. But beneath the surface of that understanding lay a deep-seated excitement and eagerness to embrace the challenges that lay ahead. In the following weeks, George's enthusiasm for flying only grew. He began regular lessons with his instructor, each session bringing new skills and insights. He learned about the mechanics of flight, the principles of aerodynamics, and the importance of weather conditions. Each lesson was filled with moments of discovery, fueling his passion and determination. William often accompanied him, sharing tips from his own experiences as a pilot. The bond between father and son deepened during these moments, their conversations ranging from the intricacies of flying to the responsibilities that came with their royal heritage. Being a pilot is about more than just flying, it's about making decisions that can affect others. You'll need to think clearly and act responsibly, William advised during one lesson. One afternoon, after a particularly successful flight, they returned to the ground and George was practically bursting with excitement. Did you see how I landed that time, Dad? I did it just like you taught me. He couldn't contain his joy as he hopped out of the cockpit, his face flushed with exhilaration. William smiled, you did a fantastic job, George. You're a natural. Just remember to stay humble and keep learning. He felt a sense of nostalgia wash over him as he watched his son. This was more than just flying, it was a passing of the torch, a continuation of the family legacy. As the lessons continued, George faced challenges as well. There were moments of frustration when things didn't go as planned, and times when he felt overwhelmed by the responsibilities that came with flying. But each setback only strengthened his resolve. He learned to embrace the difficulties, understanding that they were part of the journey. Catherine remained a steadfast supporter, attending lessons when she could, her presence a reassuring constant in George's life. She encouraged him to express his feelings, to share his worries and triumphs. Flying can be intimidating sometimes, but you're not alone in this, she reminded him during a particularly tough lesson. Talk to us, share what you're feeling. We're here for you. As time passed, George became increasingly confident. He often discussed his lessons with his parents, eager to share what he had learned. I can't wait to take you both up in the air with me. I'll show you everything, he said one evening, his excitement palpable. William and Catherine exchanged proud glances. They knew this experience was shaping him into someone who would carry the weight of his royal responsibilities with grace and poise.